It's been way too long since I made a proper electronics video. Been using these inexpensive LED night lights for the dorm room. It's a nice warm light, not a sterile bluish white light. And I've naturally been curious about how they did the circuitry inside, so I'm going to pop it open and see what I find. Got some tape over the little light sensor, but unfortunately my meter is not sensitive enough to even tell that this is drawing any power. 0, 0.00 amp, 0, 0.0 watt, 0, 0.0 volt amp, and perfect power factor. This thing can't even sense that the night light is drawing any current. Got the standard markings on the back. Model number, made in China, of course, conforms to such and such, such and such, and such and such for various countries. Meridian, lighting for the future. Hmm. And then down in the corner there, 120 volts AC, 60 hertz, one half of a watt. Interesting to note, instead of just press fit together, the case is held with a screw, so this won't be as annoying to take apart as I first thought. First look with the front taken off. There's a little photoresistor. Got the uh, heat proof cloth wrapping on the leads there, so that's nice considering that it's so close to the mains input there and there. Just a simple single sided through hole circuit board with the LED up top with the clear plastic lens. Got the circuit board removed from the case and that's all there is. In a tiny electrolytic, looks like two diodes, a larger plastic capacitor, three, yeah, one, two, three resistors, transistor, the photoresistor, and the LED itself on its own tiny little board mounted to the main board. On the back, the... Ooh, you can see right there the... It looks like kind of a messy solder job, but can't really expect too much better for something that costs, I think, five bucks for three. I've gone through and traced out the circuit to the best of my ability. There aren't any parts left over that I can see, and it mostly makes sense, so I consider that a good sign. Have the 120 volts AC input. That goes through D1, the rectifier diode, to C1, the 100 microfarad 16 volt electrolytic filter cap. This provides a positive voltage to the Q1 NPN transistor, VR1, the photoresistor, and LED1, the only LED in the circuit. When there's plenty of ambient light, the photoresistor has a very low resistance. This connects the positive rail over here to the base of Q1, turning it on. Since Q1 goes across the filter cap, across the LED and across this, Q1 shunts all of the power to ground. The LED therefore is off because there's no voltage across it. When there is very little ambient light, the resistance of the photoresistor goes up, probably to many tens of thousands of ohms or maybe even hundreds of thousands of ohms. This allows the 10 kilo ohm R3 to pull the base of Q1 down. Since Q1 now turns off, the full voltage can be applied across the LED, turning it on. Current limiting and voltage regulation is provided by C2, the 250-volt 0.82 microfarad film cap, R2, the 510-kilo-ohm resistor, and R1 over here, which I believe is just sort of like a fusible resistor that'll burn out if there's a major fault. Those keep the current in check, whereas voltage is kept in check by ZD1, which I'm assuming from its part number is a Zener diode. 
it's a bit weird that it's connected to this side of the rectifier and not directly in parallel with the filter cap, but apparently that works just fine. Went and hooked my multimeter up across the LED to measure the voltage, getting about a little less than 1.5 volts right now. Close the shades to make it a bit easier. If I take my flashlight, light up the light dependent resistor, voltage across the LED drops further as Q1 turns on more. So it's down to 0 0.75, oh, 0 0.8, it's got jumping around a bit. Take the light away, it goes right back up, and if I cover the resistor with my finger, block the light out, the LED turns on, and we're now getting 2.7675, somewhere around there. Take the finger away, and the LED goes back off. That's all, and hopefully I'll be able to make videos with a bit more regularity in the coming months and weeks. Thanks for watching.